Hi guys. Today for beta day five. <laughs> um, I'm going to be telling you guys Josiah's birth story. And I was going to do like a, like a day video, like how my days usually are on Sundays. Because usually we go to church and then we take, drop Josiah and Ben off at home so Josiah can get his nap in. And I go to my mom's and help her with like some food boxes and stuff. And so maybe next week or the week after I can uh, show you guys that, like how I make the food boxes and where we get it from and why we do it and stuff. And that would be a fun video I think to do. But today, since today's a very relaxed day, I'm going to go ahead and do Josiah's birth video. I'll probably have to do it in two, I'll probably have to cut it short at nine or ten minutes because my camera won't um, do it for past a certain amount of time. So, how his, basically, Josiah was born on his due date, February 17, 2011, and first off, on Valentine's Day, February 14th, I was having contractions on and off, and um, I thought that he was ready to come, and I went to the hospital, and basically I was just contracting, but um, not really dilating that far, I think it was like one centimeter, and um, I guess she says like 80% of face or something, let me switch this, there we go, and so then, okay, so we went home, and the contractions ended up going away, of course, um, the next day I woke up at 4 o'clock, and I ended up waking up at 4 o'clock also on Valentine's Day. So for about, so, so from 14th, 15th and yeah, 14th and 15th is when I just, they were both kind of like false alarms, I guess. Um, since I honestly think that if you're having Braxton Hicks contractions, they're not false labor. You're technically are laboring because your body is working to dilate. So I hate when people say false labor. <laughs> So it's not really false because you really are laboring. Your body, your body is preparing itself to birth out your baby. Um, so I also did that on the 15th of February. I went into the hospital and they're like, nope, you're not ready yet. So I went in two times before the third time was actually the real deal. So finally, on the third time, we went in around, I think... I'm trying to think. Um, I think the 15th, actually, I didn't go in at all. I was just having contractions on and off. It was driving me nuts. <laughs> because they were pretty painful, and um, I just wasn't quite ready for it. And then on the 16th, I went in again, and then they asked me if I wanted to take this pill, and I don't remember what it was, just to help me sleep, because I wasn't getting any sleep the past three, four days at all. And that's honestly what I wanted, was just to sleep. And so I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. So I would take the pill, and then I would fall asleep, and then wake up with intense contractions. And um, then I would just fall right back to sleep. So, I mean, they would come and go every, like, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and it was just, then it got to the point where I didn't want to go back to sleep anymore because it's like my mind wasn't prepared to have those contractions um, hit me hard on. So it's kind of like if you're, getting to a tidal wave you want to prepare yourself for and not just get smashed. <laughs> That's kind of what it felt like. I wanted to be prepared for every contraction. And then I just got to the point where I was getting really tired and exhausted and I just went into the hospital and told them, I just, I'm tired, please admit me. And then they ended up admitting me because I was about four centimeters. So I went pretty far. Um, I think we went in at about eight o'clock or so. Or six? Six o'clock. It was so long ago. I wish I would have done this video way earlier. And so we went in there and um, I finally got to a delivery room. And uh, then, of course, you know, I asked for my epidural and they said, okay, it's going to be here in a little bit. So just try walking around. And they said they weren't going to give it to me till after, till I was about six centimeters or so. So I'm like, okay, not a big deal. So my husband and I were walking around for about an hour and I went from like, three or three or four centimeters to about six or yeah about six centimeters and then to that point I was just tired and I was ready for my epidural they gave me my epidural and I fell asleep <laughs> um, they all kind of left me there and 
I was just sleeping away, switching sides ever so often. The nurse would come in there and then help me switch sides. I did that once or twice. And at about 11.40 or so um, at night, I felt a gush of water. And I mean, when you, I mean, my water broke right at nine or 10 centimeters. So that was like perfect timing. They said my water broke right when I was about ready to push. And I had the, of course, the needing to push and stuff. I told them I feel like I need to poop. <laughs> and so they came in, they checked me and they said, okay, you're ready to push and rolled over at about 11.50. My midwife came in and the intern came in and the intern actually delivered my baby. That was pretty cool. Um, and I pushed Josiah out. It didn't take me that long to push him out. We did have some problems with like, um, I guess his heartbeat, his heart level was like dropping every single time when I would push and then I would breathe and then had to give me an oxygen mask to help with him do to breathe and stuff. Um, but it only took me about 20 minutes to push him out. My husband said that he thinks it was a lot shorter than 20 minutes or so. When I did push him out, I had the epidural so I didn't feel myself um, tear so bad. I had about a three to four degree tear and um, yeah, it was pretty bad. It was pretty painful. Um, <laughs> just like postpartum was more painful than anything. Um, and so basically they, then they took Josiah, you know, he was screaming his head off when we got him out. He actually, when he came out, he had his hand on his head like this. And so they said that that might've been another reason why I tore. Um, honestly, I think that if I would have not had the epidural and I would have felt myself like stretch, like I'm going to be doing this time with this baby, then I probably wouldn't have torn so bad. Um, but they said that's probably why I tore like I did was because his hand was on the side of his head and I pushed so fast and it was just like the combination of things that made me get a almost a four degree tear. So I was getting stitched up and, um, they took Josiah and they gave him all of his stuff that the hospital usually gives you, the vitamin K, the, um, the eye stuff and all that jazz. They brought him back to me, all wrapped up and home on my chest, and it was just, while they're stitching me up, I just got to look at my baby, and it was a really cool thing, and then I actually had, yeah, I had to push out the placenta first, before the stitches, obviously, and that only took, like, a half a push. They told me to stop, <laughs> because, like, I guess I was pushing too hard, and they go, just little pushes. And obviously when you're up on the epidural, you can't really feel yourself do anything. So I said like a little tiny push that I thought and they told me to stop. Ben got to see the placenta. I didn't get to see it. And Ben says, Ben thought it was the grossest thing ever. It was so funny. So this time I'll be able to see my placenta. This video is kind of bouncing back and forth all over the place, isn't it? It's kind of funny. <laughs> so let's see. So yeah, then they gave me my baby, and then, um, and of course I had to go to the bathroom and stuff, and I almost fainted in the bathroom because I guess they said I lost a little bit more blood than a normal, um, person would, so my iron levels were really low, and they, um, didn't really give me anything for that, um, they were just kind of hoping that my body would, um, reju rejuvenate itself. Um, for iron intake and it did eventually I was still pretty anemic for a long time I was probably anemic for a good two to three weeks um, and I was just taking iron supplements still taking my prenatals and um, yeah but that was pretty hard <laughs> almost passed out twice um, yeah took us up to our room and then it was about 12 he was born at 12.05 on February 17th his birthday um, and he was due on February 17th, so five minutes into his due date he was born, so that was pretty cool. Um, not many babies, I guess, are born on their due dates, I guess it was like 3% or 5, something like that. So, yeah, they took us up to his room, to our room, and then they bathed him, and actually our friend, um, she works and she actually asked to work with us because she knew us and she saw our names on the board and she was really excited and she came in and she bathed our baby gave him a little teddy bear which actually he sleeps with all the time 
Um, he will not leave that teddy bear. <laughs> he takes it upstairs with him. He carries it around with him everywhere. Um, when we give it to him at night, he chews on the nose of it. And I've washed that thing so many times that it looks ugly now. It's gross and it doesn't look pretty. It's got little lint fuzzies all over it, but he just loves that thing. Um, so we got to chat with her and it was really late at night, but I wasn't ready to sleep. Um, Josiah was sleeping mostly <laughs> because um, it seemed like the epidural made him real drowsy and sleepy. So he slept and then at about three or so, two or three o'clock in the morning he and he seemed hungry so I wanted to try nursing try getting him to latch um, and to get some of my colostrum so that he can sleep a little bit and he did really well at latching and stuff and we didn't really have any problems I mean he fell fell off my boob a couple times but the nurse came back and helped me um, it was pretty late at night and there wasn't many moms that had their babies so it was just like me and two other moms there so there wasn't um, so she had plenty of time to help me out and stuff. And like during the day when they were just crazy busy, the nurses were. So we were in the hospital for two nights and three days, which is pretty long. Um, but the reason why we were able to stay for two nights is because technically um, the night that we were there when we were admitted um, before, since I haven't had them right after midnight, we just considered that one night. And they gave us the option to either go home that day or to go home the night after. So we opted for going home the night after. So we didn't get home till till like the 18th. So um, I got a little bit more rest and a little bit more time at the hospital in. But it was too much time. I was ready to go home. Lots of friends and family came in. And that was just, it was really fun. Um, yeah. And... Because of my stitches and everything, they were very watchful of that. They really wanted to make sure that they weren't, um, that they were still, the, obviously that they were done right because it interned in them. And she did a really good job, I guess. And that's what they told me. <laughs> and like this birth experience is completely, going to be completely different than, um, than Josiah's. Be just because I'm going to know exactly what's going on, um, the hospital just kind of does stuff without telling you and the hospitals are great and stuff but hospitals are for sick people you go there when you're sick and I honestly think if you're gonna have a baby have it at home in the comfort of your own home and have it in a birth center where there's women there to take care of you and give you yummy meals and yummy food hospital foods not that great and every time I got my dinner it was always like half cold because they had to deliver it to 15 other gals before me um, but yeah I always thought you know, right after I had him and I did more research on birthing and um, I wanted to have a more natural experience and then somebody made a good quote, you go to the hospital when you're sick, you don't go to the hospital to have babies. <laughs> so that was a good point to make. I mean, it's good to obviously go to the hospital if you have more difficulties with your pregnancy, but I had a completely normal pregnancy with Josiah. Um, and so going for a natural birth probably would have been better for me the first time around. But I'm kind of glad that I get to have both experiences just so I can tell people the two different experiences that I am going to have. And then people can ask me questions, well, which one did you like better? And so that's going to be great. I know this video is really jumpy. It's jumping all around all over the place just because I can't remember a lot of stuff with Josiah's birth. <laughs> and it's driving me nuts. It's like here and there little things pop up that I can remember. Um, so we went home February 18th. We went home in the morning so I was just eager to get home. I was tired of the hospital, tired of looking at it. We get home about noon or so and I mean Josiah was a colicky baby. <laughs> so the first three months of life I don't remember much at all with him other than um, just pain and sleep deprived and don't get me wrong guys like having a baby is the most wonderful thing in the world and none of your stories are going to be like mine um, every story for a mom to have their baby is completely different and unfortunately I probably got the more bitter end of having a baby and I mean I've had friends that have babies and they bounce right back to their mommy form and for me it took it takes a lot longer and I'm still struggling and um 
but it's always good to tell other women about what you went through if you had a really difficult pregnancy or postpartum like I did. I had a really difficult postpartum. Um, and I would love to talk about my postpartum in like a different video. I might just make this into two parts. Um, just because my postpartum is just something I really want to explain. Um, I did have a very difficult postpartum and I think other women should know about it because I never knew about it when uh, after I had them I didn't know how hard it was going to be and for some women it's so easy I always thought what is wrong with me I thought <laughs> why am I so tired and why am I in so much pain and why am I so irritated and just don't want to do anything have no motivation but it was just because of how um, things were handled with with the pregnancy, with having him, with um, with support and all of that and so yeah I think I'm going to go ahead and put this in another video for postpartum. That was pretty much it for Josiah's pregnancy. He had a very normal normal um, birth, um, just the epidural and pushed him out in 20 minutes which is pretty fast for a first timer I was told, um, especially with having an epidural. But because I did push them out so fast, I did tear a lot. So that's always always something to consider um, when having an epidural and stuff. And like I said, there's other women that have never had problems. And they just have either smaller babies or they don't have their kids coming out like Superman or <laughs> something like that. So anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this. And I hope that you enjoyed your weekend. I hope it was nice and sunny like it was here in Oregon. I think I'm going to go ahead and shut up now. And make another video about my postpartum. Thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.